Hello and welcome to Kate Lane, home of Bishop's Cleve Football Club, where today, 12 months after Mousel's heaviest defeat of last season, which ended 4-1 to the home side, they're back again one year later and the Seagulls will be seeking revenge. This is Bishop's Cleve versus Mousel. Welcome to the field. Mousel! Meadow, recently you've made some key interventions in the back line. How are you feeling about your football at the minute? Happy with the way things are going. As a defender, it's my duty to stop the other team from scoring. So any way I can do that, help the team, keep a clean sheet, um, it's positive. So I'm really happy with that. You've been here for a few months now. How are you settling in here? Um, settling in really well, to be fair. It's a bit different to London, where I'm actually from. Um, it's quiet, not really much going on in terms of like when I don't have football or anything like that but I'm getting used to it now. I've moved into a new place, settling in really well, so yeah. How do you feel the long bus journeys are affecting us at the minute? Mm. I think on Saturdays when we have to get up really early at like seven to get to Penzance Station for 7.30, that does take a toll, but on a game like Tuesday where we're up at like 11 a.m. to travel, it's not too bad, but just depends on like the distance. Um, today wasn't too bad. I don't think, um, yeah, it was all right. I don't really think it takes that much of a toll on our performance. We still, we're still able to get results and it's not really an excuse, so, yeah. Thanks, Mano. Time here at Bishop's Cleaver, and Mousel have gone in leading by a goal to nil. It was a finish from Torin and Tege after a poor clearance from the goalkeeper that's given us the lead. And now Mousel will go into the second 45 looking to take more chances to take all three points home.
all finished here and Bishop's Cleave have beaten Mousel by two goals to one. The main talking point of the second half was a disallowed goal from Oli Challoner, which everyone in the Mousel dugout was certain had crossed the line. And to add insult to injury, Bishop's Cleave went on to then score the winner. And for the second year in a row, Mousel have left Bishop's Cleave without any points in the bag. Jake, tough result to take. Can I have your reflection on him? Yeah. I mean, obviously, the players, right, everyone's just massively disappointed. Um, I don't know who's more at fault. I mean, the, the design of the goals is a constant problem. You see it up and down the country on all of these AstroTurfs. It happens so often. How, how haven't they come up with something where it doesn't happen? I can't get my head around that. How three officials, and I've just spoke to them, and fair play, they talked well. Doesn't change anything though. I don't understand how not one of the three of them can see that but when it's hit the wheel, it's really obvious. Everyone can see it in the whole stadium. It makes a totally different sound to everything else. The ball bounces in a different direction from everyone else. Anyone that's got any sense of physics and, and played sport knows the way the ball comes out isn't the normal way it comes out if it's hit the, the post. Um, you know, they've said they've happened ha happen lots of times to Bishop's Cleave, um, but they found it quite funny. Um, so, yeah, it leaves a horrible sour taste in the mouth. We still got to defend the, the goal. You know, we didn't defend the goal. But it's difficult to react after that. It's difficult to, when you know, you know, listen, decisions go against you. I accept that. But when you know that has gone against you, it's tough. So it's a bit hard to analyse at this stage, if I'm honest. Just pain and, yeah, just gutted. This allowed goal was out of your hands. Do you feel there are any decisions, like, that you could have changed yourself? Um, no, I felt like they started the second half well. We ended the first half well, they ended started the second half well. We changed our shape and I felt like we had, I felt, like we had a good grip on the game to be honest and look like they're a dangerous team they're always a dangerous team they're very um they get the ball forward really quickly but they also give you a lot of space to to go and, and attack them um so it can be like a you know, i said to the boys you can lose here 4-1 like we did last year and you can win it 5-1 um i felt like we could go away from the second half if that one goes in and it's you know it, it's it's 2-1 you know nixie then has another chance you know i think we take the we, we take the game away from because i think they push even more bodies forward but you know not to be so um, uh, well, I can't, if I'm honest, because of the way I feel, I, it's difficult to analyse the game too much at this stage. So we'll watch it back and, and have a look. We can always be better. We haven't trained much recently because of the games. The, 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 the schedule's been obviously mental. So the next week gives us a chance to get some training sessions in, work on a few little bits to fix. Our squad was really strong today. Obviously, we missed Julio. Um, he's been top, top for us. It'd be great to get him back involved. So the squad's in a good place um, today. As tough as it is, we've got to not feel too sorry for ourselves because we, we, we all know what happened. Thanks, Jake.